So here's a story um, from the UK. First measles death for 14 years in the UK. Uh, unfortunately, um, this is from uh, two years ago in 2006, two and a half years ago in early 2006, um, that this 13-year-old this boy died from the measles, because that does happen sometimes, and he had not been vaccinated. Um, here's a story from this year, measles cases on increase in the US, and you could find many stories like this um, over the past few months. This year, so far, it looks like measles rates are about quadruple what they were last year. And these, these measles cases are almost entirely among unvaccinated children. So we have diseases that we had under control uh, that we no longer, we may no longer have them under control, and all because many parents think that autism is being caused by these vaccines, so they're withholding vaccines. So let me, let me just address one more question which I haven't addressed. Is there an autism epidemic? There has, in fact, been a dramatic rise in the rates of autism diagnosis over the past 15 or 20 years. Um, so this, are, this study looked at that question. Um, so rates of, and they acknowledge rates of diagnosis of autism have risen since 1980, raising the question of whether some children who pre previously had other diagnoses are now being diagnosed with autism. So what that's saying is that um, it could be that autism is really rising, that there really are more cases of autism, so something's going on, or it could be that we're diagnosing more children with autism, but in fact the rate is stable, that we're simply are, are noticing it more. So this study, um, their conclusion was, um, our study shows pretty direct evidence, this is a quote, this is not from the actual study, this is an interview with the, the lead author, uh, Dorothy Bishop, pretty direct evidence to support the theory that changes in diagnosis may contribute towards the rise in autism. So, they looked at children that people were saying were not autistic in the 1980s, but when they talked to their parents as they did in the study, they found that, well, those children today would have been called autistic because we've changed the diagnostic criteria. So in, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, the diagnostic criteria for autism were dramatically expanded, and that's one of the main reasons why the rates have been rising. So the historical rate of autism is about four per 10,000, historical being 1970s, 1980s. I uh, remember it was first called autism uh, in, around 19, uh, 1940, um, so the word wasn't even used before that. More recent estimates are, are about quadruple that rate, 15 to 20 per 10,000. Um, so I've, I'm going to now show you quickly three large studies that show that this change is not due to a raise, uh, to a, a rising uh, uh, rates of autism, but to increasing numbers of di increasing the diagnosis of autism. So here's one study. Um, vaccines and the changing epidemiology of autism, and this study concluded that the increase in autism diagnoses reflects greater recognition of the disease, broadening of diagnostic criteria, a greater willingness by parents to accept the label, and better recording systems. There's probably been no real increase in the incidence of autism. Here's a second study, um, also from, this one from 2005. Um, this study concluded that the main explanation for this rise, that is in autism diagnosis rates, is to be found in better ascertainment and broadening of the diagnostic concept. And here's a third study, um, from, also from 2005, and this study found uh, the rates of autism, the rate of autism and related disorders in this study is comparable to that in previous birth cohorts, suggesting a stable incidence uh, rate of autism. That is, that suggesting that the rate of autism is the same now as it was, in this case, 10 or 12 years earlier. So what does science tell us today? Well, when you look at, I don't have, I'm not going to show you more of the scientific articles about what, uh, what causes autism, but there have been a number of studies that show that it's, it's largely genetic. There have been um, quite a few different genes now implicated in autism, but there's no one gene in, that, that causes autism. At least we haven't found such a gene. It's very unlikely that there is one gene that causes autism. And as I said before, it's a range of disorders. It might be that different genes cause different severities, uh, uh, different types of disease that we call autism. Uh, identical twin studies show convincingly though, that there's a major genetic factor. If, you, if, you have, if you're autistic and you have an identical twin, that twin is about a 90% chance of also being autistic. If you have a fraternal twin, then the chances are, are much lower, around 10 or 20%. Uh, as I just said, multiple genes are involved and it's a range of disorders. There's no environmental cause yet identified. All these other theories that I've been discussing today are environmental causes. Environmental being anything other than genetic, anything you're, you're exposed to in your environment after you're born. One of the studies that I was just showing you says that postnatal causes are, are unlikely. Um, but meanwhile, vaccines are under attack. Uh, so unfortunately, this controversy will not go away as long as patient groups aided by quack doctors and the media continue to promote it. Um, and activist groups are continuing to attack vaccines. I'll show you one more example, one final example. Um, there's lawyers that are now making thimerosal litigation a specialty. There are lawyers who are preparing 
uh, for um, a big payday, just the way they've had big paydays with, say, tobacco. Um, and and uh, unfortunately, as long as there's, and they look at drug companies as having deep pockets, and um, some patient groups are claiming there's conspiracy to cover all this up, and lawyers are happy to aid them in that. Um, Generation Rescue, which is led by Jenna McCarthy and funded by the, well, a wealthy anti-vaccine zealot, repeatedly takes out full-page ads in major newspapers attacking vaccines. And unfortunately, scientists don't, don't have the resources to do this, and NIH doesn't, have, doesn't uh, do things like this. So here's an ad. This is an ad uh, that Generation Rescue ran in USA Today, a full-page ad they ran in USA Today earlier this year. Um, and if you look at it, are we poisoning our kids in the name of protecting their health? Where they show these are the small number of vaccines we had um, 20 years ago, and look at all the vaccines we're giving to our kids today, and look at how the autism rate is rising. If you zoom in a little bit, um, I know it's hard to read that, so if you zoom in a little bit on some of the text, mercury, aluminum, formaldehyde, ether, antifreeze, not exactly what you'd expect or want to find in your child's vaccinations. And by the way, that's not what you'll find in your child's vaccinations, but that's what they're saying you'll find in your child's vaccinations. Um, and they also say vaccines are supposed to safeguard their health, yet according to our studies can also do harm to some children. Well, according to their studies, I don't know what those studies are, but they're not appearing in, in reputable peer-reviewed scientific journals because reputable peer-reviewed scientific articles are showing there's no link between vaccines and any of these uh, diseases that they're claiming, and, and autism or other diseases. And they have other things too about how uh, the vaccine rate, the number of vaccines has gone up and autism has gone up. Just a coincidence? We don't think so. Well, it is just a coincidence. And as I just showed you, studies are showing that the rise in rates of autism is caused by a broadening of the diagnostic criteria. The reason that we have more vaccines for our children is because we've been able to come up with vaccines and control these diseases that were harming our children. So of course we're giving them more vaccines, but it's unrelated to the fact that autism rates are rising. So where are we today? So uh, Wakefield's original study 10 years ago looked at just 12 hand-picked patients. Um, later studies involving over a million children collectively have shown MMR vaccine does not cause autism. They've shown that thimerosal does not cause autism. Um, they've also shown there's no autism epidemic. But despite that, all of these, all three of these, um, all three of these hypotheses are still circulating widely in the media and widely among some parent groups. So what can we do? What can people like you do? Or what can I do? Uh, we can do the best we can to educate other people, each other, and people we come in contact with to try to counter the misinformation. Um, we can also point out that studies, so I just want to mention when they were asking the, on the Larry King show, uh, Jenny McCarthy and David Kirby saying, would you support the study? You know, they were asking the pediatrician. So they're proposing some kind of study of vaccinated versus unvaccinated children. So you should point out that studies like that have already been done. And if you put more money into studies like that, you're going to find the same thing again. That money is taken away from other studies that would really perhaps do some good in terms of helping us understand what's really causing autism. And meanwhile, vaccination rates are falling in the U.S., and we have to do whatever we can to reverse this trend. Uh, and the best I can see us doing is, is simply educating people and trying not to let them, let them win because we really can't. So I'll stop there, and I guess we'll, I'll take questions. Thank you.